Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions, my name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out a rather bite-sized little puzzle platformer by the name of Iris from the Global Game Jam 2014. It is a very atmospheric, very ambient little platformer and one that I thought would be quite suitable for the show. It's got a great sense of art style to it and in fact the one thing that I think really makes it stand out aside from the art style is the basic premise, which is that we'll be using this Oculus eyeglass type thing uh, that is controlled by our cursor here to allow us passage through a number of obstacles by seeing an alternate reality. So, pretty cool premise. I really like it. And before we get started, I just want to say this is my first episode back. I've been gone away at PAX for nearly a week, uh, and although you guys probably didn't notice it, I've had uploads going up every day I've been gone, but it has been quite a while now. So it's good to be back, and I think this is a nice one to do on, uh, you know, my return here. Uh, it's not going to be a long game, like I mentioned, rather bite-sized, but I think you're going to like it. So let's get started. Uh, click here to begin. You basically just mouse over the sun. And here we go. We're going to be playing as a, a little girl in a very foreboding world. So you see there's these red letters, and of course mouse over those, and we can see sort of like a revealing it from another dimension. When I was a kid, things seemed peaceful. So it's, I guess, a temporal rift, I suppose? We're looking through to another... I get, it seems like it wants to phrase it like it's going to be we're looking forward or backward in time, but it also just might be two parallel dimensions where, you know, things are happy, things are sad. Uh, I guess it could be both, perhaps. Well, maybe. I don't know. Um, so I want to put my walls up, it says, and then in the happy dimension, I want to go on an adventure. So you can see she's clearly got, you know, two sides to her personality. One side is being very defensive and being very guarded and introverted, and the other side wants to get out and see things and have a good time and, and enjoy herself. So uh, I found this little sort of a... Easter egg, I suppose you could say, in this spot uh, when I was messing around with this. And I did actually play with this for a little while. Uh, in fact, I did finish this several times. Like I said, it's quite short, so we'll be able to run through the whole thing. So you'll see our character actually get suspended in the air if we take the Oculus thing away. And we can actually use that to kind of manipulate the character up to the roof and raise our little flag, which I think is kind of a cool little touch. Also, I was curious to know how the collision works like this, too. Uh, because basically wherever the floor is, it's wherever we've revealed with the glass. So, yeah, to give you kind of a perspective on how that works, kind of neat. So levels are very simple. I mean, you can probably get the picture here. Uh, there's not all that many different permutations of this idea, you know, revealing one thing in one level, revealing a different thing in another level. Uh, but it certainly seems like it's got the framework to go a long way. And by the way, I'm sorry, I'm buying time here while I talk. I don't want to just finish the game in five seconds. I feel like I can go anywhere versus I feel like I'm at a dead end. So, you know, Happy World says there's a bridge here. Sad World says we're kind of stuck. There's also some uh, little Easter eggs located in the ground at times. I found there was like a spelunker head on one level, and little mine picks on another level. I may have passed that already. Uh, I'm always burning bridges. I'm happy when it rains. Oh yeah, there's little mine picks I mentioned before. Yeah, I must have passed the spelunker head. And I like these little details, you know, like we've got these bushes that are sort of like sad little stick bushes on one side, uh, and then we've got like on another one of those bushes versus tombstones or something like that. You know, it's neat to see the different ways that you can transform an environment, and I really like the visual effect that the lens has as you pass over these surfaces, how it sort of bends and distorts a little bit through the light. Uh, probably above and beyond what the developers needed to do with this, but I think it goes a long way to make it seem a little bit more polished. Uh, not that other elements of it don't make it feel polished, but it's just, it's a nice little feature and nice touch. Uh, so the puzzle here, and it's not a super tough one or anything, but basically we just need to make it rain, uh, because in Optimism World, you know, looking at the cloud says she gets happy when it rains, so we'll just transcend one to the other. So everything is a hazard or everything is great. So we've got either a tombstone, oh, there's the spelunky head in the ground. Uh, so Tombstone turns into a flower, these horrifying bunny monsters turn into these adorable a boy in his blob looking bunny creature bags. I don't know, they don't seem to have legs, but I kind of like it that way. And you'll notice, of course, this is shrinking, so I only get a certain amount of this, so I have to make it count when I pass over these uh, angry bunny creatures. Not particularly difficult here or anything. Oh, and the bushes actually spawn out of nothing, I didn't notice that before. Makes me wonder why the statue is the end point for each screen. I'm sure there's probably some significance to that, and these flaming scary birds essentially are not that big of a problem as long as we have a little bit of lens to shine on them. Oh, well, actually that one got me because I was being a little careless. So we'll just use this to hold them off and turn them into happy, happy pink birds. 
Uh, this is one of the ones that I really liked a lot. It basically just doesn't look like there's anything here at all. And then when you reveal it, it's actually the tops of these trees that you can jump across. Uh, you can also make it rain. And my first thought was, like, maybe we're going to make something grow uh, in the other rift world. But it doesn't seem to be the case uh, here. So we're just going to basically carry our character along. And as long as we follow the character with the lens, then things are going to be just fine. Uh, there is so much chaos. There is so much beauty. So yeah, angry demon b uh, bunnies versus pink happy birds, or happy bunnies versus demon birds. It's, you know, goes in both directions. Uh, I much prefer the idyllic version, of course. So basically, we just need to save up all of our lens juice and make sure we just carry it right over the character at all times. And, no, uh, we gotta be a little more careful than that. This is, uh, possibly the last level already? It goes by so fast. I really love the premise of this. I would have loved to see, like, a hundred levels of this and where you could take this concept uh, with all of these various things that sort of do have a nice ambience to them and a nice feeling of mood. Uh, and the music goes a long way to that as well. The music feels really great and really does accentuate uh, the point. Uh, so in this one, she says, I wish I could be content versus I hope I'm happy when I grow up. So I think this is kind of like the final message here. You know, we see tombstones and everything in the dark world, but then we get to the end and she switches places with the statue, and what I presume this to mean, so you see the girl on one side, the, the grown-up on the other side, uh, I'm guessing this is her being content where she is now the mother looking at her daughter versus the other way around, which is kind of a nice way to wrap it up because you know honestly like I said I would have loved to have seen a lot more to this game but if you're gonna keep it super short and since it's a game jam game you know what can you expect um, I think that is a really nice way to put a bow on it and it does feel complete in that way uh, but yeah if the developers ever see this this is a great idea I would love to see more I think probably a lot of us would uh, but feel free to chime in in the comments I'd like to hear what your opinions are of this unfortunately this is the end already you know I wish there could be more but uh, we are going to be saying goodbye for another day, so thank you everybody for watching. Make sure you check out the description if you'd like to play this yourself. Link's going to be right in there. This is totally free, by the way. You can download it. It's a build, I think, for Mac, Linux, and Windows, so uh, whatever you got, there should be something for you in there. Uh, there might have even been an online link. I'll, I'll have to double-check in that, but I'll, I'll have whatever the requisite links are in the description. Of course, my other information is there as well, so if you'd like to check out my Facebook, my Twitter, my Twitch page, or my main page, Indie-Impressions.com, which is for the series. You can check out over 700 other episodes in this and see if there's something else that you might be interested in. So all in all, Iris, big thumbs up. I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you did as well. Like I said, leave some comments. Let me know what you think of this premise, what you might have done to expand upon it, and if you had any good ideas for how this puzzle could have fit in or how you might have made a puzzle that would have fit in with the puzzles that are presented here. I'd be kind of curious to hear that as well. So thank you as always for watching, and be sure to come back again tomorrow. New episodes go up every single day, so I'll see you back for that, and I hope you have a fantastic night. Talk to you later.